there was an interesting thing. This girl, I, I started following on Instagram. She's really inspiring, full of like, she talks about being in flow state with fitness. Really healthy, fit, just out there really going for it. And I saw her by chance on Instagram the other day. And I was like, wow, this is, this is an interesting woman because she's so expressive emotionally. And, and, and then she wrote this thing about fitness. And she said, showed a picture of her when she was fatter back in 2013 or 14. She was out of shape and she was barely getting out of bed and she was kind of depressed. And now, and you're like, oh my God, look at the difference. This big, bright ball of energy. And she said back in 2013, she was dating a guy who worked out a lot. And she made him promise to make sure she worked out a little bit every day. And I thought, my immediate thought was, well, if you made that promise to a nice guy, would he, what would he do the moment you get up and you're grumpy in the morning as a girl? What would he do? Like, you're like, I don't want to get out of bed today. What would the nice guy do? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. A real nice guy might go make her breakfast and hand it to her. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And now, now she likes it in the moment, but begins to resent him, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Now, what this girl said was there was one time she'd made him promise, no matter what, get me out of bed. She goes, and I can remember uh, there were a few days he literally yanked the covers off me and yanked me out of bed and onto the floor. And she says, and it was because of that that I am where I'm at today. So do you feel how he, 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 was he afraid to piss, get her pissed off? No, he took control of the situation. Yeah. And because he was willing to let her be, she probably was pissed in the moment, right? But then did she build resentment later because of it? No. Mm-hmm. She let it go and then probably ended up appreciating him more later. Do you see the difference between a nice guy and a non-nice guy? Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's an interesting comparison, isn't it? Are you willing to make her mad to create something better? Are you willing to make yourself mad to create something better? Who are you willing to piss off to grow? Whereas the nice guys aren't willing to piss anybody off. That's why bad boys get the girl because bad boys aren't afraid to piss you off. Bad boys aren't always gonna give them what they want or what either of them want. They might go for what they want, but at least they're not afraid of them and they're not afraid to to, to say what they feel. You see, you see the difference? So I always see nice guys as the ultimate resentment creator because they never really show up. And that's why all nice guy relationships ultimately fail or dissolve, devolve into an apathetic relationship of numbness. Okay. So um, you, anybody want to say anything? Cool. Okay, cool. Anybody uh, can relate to what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, cool. Good, 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 good. Um, so let's take a look at vulnerability. Um, nice guys tend to be vulnerable to a point, right? They might be good with emotion. They might be good at feeling her emotion. But what they do is they always try to, let's say she's sad and they're really good at feeling her sadness and listening. One thing they do is they take on her sadness all the time and they let her dump on on them all the time until they're filled with it. Or another thing they do, because what they're trying to do is get rid of all the tension in her because as long as she's upset, he's not doing his job. So it's a codependent process. I have to make you feel better as fast as humanly possible. I'm not a good friend. I'm not a good boyfriend. Okay, so they're good with vulnerability in the sense that they can feel her pain but they're bad with vulnerability in the sense that they try to take it all on for everybody else. Now, what if you could feel somebody's pain and you didn't take it on for them? You created a container for them to handle it themselves. You were able to step into it and sometimes amplify the pain to ultimately heal the pain. You know, when she, let's say you had a girlfriend that's constantly dumping all her emotions on you. And so she feels better, but then you always feel like shit. At what point do you stop that and make her own her own? You know, you don't have to solve it for her, but you also don't need to be a dumping ground, right? And nice guys become dumping grounds. Not just for her emotion. Like how many, how many, honestly, have you ever been guilty of this, ladies? Um, You get a nice guy. You see that he takes it. And maybe subtly you start to build a little resentment because every day he just, I just can dump more on him. I can expect more out of him. And so because he just keeps doing it, 
you take it, you maybe push it a little farther each day. How much more can I put on this guy? How much more can I get away with? How, how far can I push it? Till pretty soon you find yourself just dumping all kinds of stuff on him. And he's, and it, it's, it's almost like there's a sense of, uh, uh, like, when are you going to man up and tell me to stop? Yeah, and then so pretty soon you don't even want to be with them. I haven't, um, I haven't per se like pushed more and more and more. I have built up a bit of a resentment and that kind of thing on other ways too. But this is when I catch myself like I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this guy because I'll get, I'll it'll be the first one to pick up because usually you might pick up and call a girlfriend or whatever. But it's now I'm picking up, I'm calling yeah. this guy. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's so great because he can listen to everything, you know, and all that. <laughs> And I'm dumping and dumping, and I realize in the story where I'm just like really going like, oh, this person pissed me off or whatever about it. And then in the story, I'm like, yeah, girl, you know, I'm saying, and I'm like, oh my god, girl, I have done that. I've done mm-hmm. that twice, and it was like too bad. But it was just, because you're just so wrapped up in it, and you're just like, yeah, you know, girl, I just did it. And it was like, oh wow. And then I like, I, I'm like, I, mean, I try to like brush over it really quick, and then it, it clicks to me like, oh. You're, this is the guy that you're going, you know, that, that I'm, but it's exactly what you're saying. Like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, he just listens to everything, but he's never going to be out of the friend zone. You know, yeah. what I mean? like, he'll never be romantic. It oh, never. Was like our That's great. Side I love that. Too. I think it, it brings a really toxic side out of, of ourselves that we don't need either. Like mm-hmm. it, it teaches us to be that little girl that can throw a tantrum. Mm-hmm. And you're just how big of a tantrum can I throw? And then yeah, and it just can get bigger and bigger and bigger because you've allowed us to have that. Whereas you know, I, I mean, I feel like I see it more so clearly when you see a great parent in front of a child, you know, and they're so good at just going like, nope, and putting that container around that little kid, you know, and immediately that tantrum just stops. Yeah. And I've seen that so much with myself in relationships too, where, <laughs> you know, they just let it keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was in the building. I saw it two days ago, a parent on the ski slope, this little kids like this big crying and screaming because they didn't want to come off the ski slope. And the parent is trying to reason with the kid <laughs> and you can't reason with a five-year-old, you know, and they're trying to explain logic to the kid. And I'm like, just create a container to let the kid throw the tantrum. You stay calm. Like I did with you and the kid will calm down. And it's so true being a woman. Yeah. I mean, you do that for us? I've been stopped like by a guy. Like, and it was like, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I'm like, yeah, this is, you know what, Nikki? Okay, look, do you, it, just to come in, not necessarily was saying to fix it, but like, stopped it. Mm-hmm. It's like, can we stop this? Do you want me to create a solution for this? Or what do you like? You That's know? a great, yeah. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'll listen. Like, <laughs> you know, but like, stop the. Yeah, yes. like, we're, we're not going to keep doing this. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> You know, and, and there is a point, right? You got you to gotta determine what's too much and what's too little and what you need to listen to and what you don't. And that's a skill set in itself, right? But it's all super true. You know, so I, she will throw, a, how many women, and you guys will see this, you'll see it in movies, you'll see it played out through, through life if you pay attention. Women will throw, create bigger and bigger dramas for guys that aren't containing them. Why would they do that? The, the drama, maybe you get a little drama and you don't create a container and you just, okay, okay. The next day it's bigger and it's bigger and it's bigger. And she, you can tell she's getting more insecure with the relationship. She's dumping more on you. She's getting, creating more intensity at you. What's going on? She's testing you. Unconsciously. Yeah. She's getting very, look, if her, your gift to her is containing, grounding, and leading as a man, and she needs to feel that from you, and you're just not doing it. What is she got? What is she gonna do? She's question, gonna question like you masculinity in a way on because you're not mm-hmm. containing it. She's gonna give you more to contain and more to contain. She's gonna give you the very thing you're afraid of mm-hmm. until you either drown in it and it falls apart, or you man up and fucking deal with it, and then she'll feel safe again because you finally showed up. That's nature. That's not her consciously thinking this up. That's nature saying, man the fuck up. Because you can't handle her, how are you going to go out and hunt for her? How are you going to go out and battle for, to keep the babies protected? That goes back to our nature, right? It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have kids or you have to go really hunting anymore, but that's still in us. 
And then it makes her, because she needs to feel secure that she's got a man that's giving these gifts. So she's going to test those gifts throughout your life on a regular basis. Unconsciously, most likely. Sometimes consciously. And you need to feel like you've got a feminine woman. What happens when you don't have a feminine woman that's willing to be feminine for you and give you feminine energy? She gets logical. She gets, Maybe she starts to emasculate. She starts to take the masculine. And how does that feel to you guys? How long? How long? She's now she's not giving you her gift. She refuses. At what point? Like, you know, what, what, what point do you get tired of that? So I'll give you two examples. Um, so I just got to decide the order in which I want to go. Um, how does it feel, guys, when a woman, this is something I heard from David Data years ago. How does it feel when you're, let's say you plan a trip somewhere. You get in the car, you're driving, and she's constantly telling you what lane to drive in, where to turn, take this route, it's faster, this is better. How does it feel to you? Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and a lot of women say, oh, it's okay. Just, just, you know, just be, they almost see it as like, it's not a big deal. Just be a man. Take my direction. Right. They say that doesn't necessarily mean they mean that down a deep unconscious level, but they say that out loud. They might believe it consciously, but if they, but if you keep following the directions all the time, just doing what they say, they also start to lose respect for you too. So it's a little bit of a dance, right? Now, what would be the female equivalent of that? What would be the reverse? Picture, now for the ladies, picture, picture you're getting ready and you're getting all dolled up to be a lady for a man, right? Maybe you spend 45 minutes an hour getting ready. Then you walk out ready and your guy's still not ready and he still, he takes another 30 minutes to make himself perfect for you. And he walks out and how do you feel? Oh God. I've had this happen before. Right, that's what's <laughs> missed a bride walking down the fucking aisle and like that was probably where the relationship was like the final straw like, fuck you like, like I'm sitting here ready to go to a wedding and you're not ready yet because your hair has to be perfect yeah. <laughs> still a lot of resentment there <laughs> okay so what's going on there that's the equivalent of the map thing why she's expecting the guy to but why is that important? That's not really what it's about. That is part of it in this case. In this case, there's multiple things going on. Well, what is it about? Let's say you're just going out to dinner. And you do that. It'd still piss her off, wouldn't it? Especially if you did it on a regular basis. It's a form of not being ready to be No, it's deeper than that. It's disrespectful. It's deeper than that. It is disrespectful, but why? Why? Not because you're late. Like, she's late. She might be late for you all the time getting ready, making herself pretty. What's the difference between that and you being like, you see what I mean? It's, it's like, let's go back to the map thing. What if, uh, uh, it's like, what, it, what's the big deal? Why is it disrespectful that she takes the map from you all the time and tells you how to drive? Why don't you just follow? Why is that not a big deal? And like masculinity, fem, like feminine thing. It's like, you take on her role. Well, she's telling you your masculine doesn't matter. I don't need you to lead. I'll lead for us. Mm-hmm. You just follow along and be my little puppy dog. Do what I say when I say it. And then how, how long would you feel sexy in that relationship? How long would you feel like a man in that relationship? You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we reverse it. It's the same thing. What is she feeling when you outcompete, when you, when you outdo making yourself be beautiful and attractive and when you work harder at her, at it than her, what are you, what are you competing with? You're infringing in her territory. Yeah, what's that territory? Of beauty and... Well, femini- femininity is a reflection of light. It's the, it's the, or femininity is the expression of light and color and life. And so when you're trying to compete with her femininity, you're trying to be, in a sense, more feminine than she is, prettier than she is. It almost makes me, I feel like, going back to my own personal experience, it made me feel like I must not be doing a good enough job. I must not be enough. Yeah. So that you have to be doing all of this in order to almost compete with me. Yeah. yeah. And so in the car, does it not feel the same way when she takes charge? Yes. Yeah. So understanding these dynamics can go a long ways towards 
being better with women, whether you just, it's these dynamics are at play, whether you just walk up to her in a bar for the first time or whether you've been dating her for 10 years. I have, video, I have one video of an old couple, but I've seen several videos where couples have been married for uh, a long time, 50 years. The longest, I used to have an article of a couple that had been married 81 years. Uh, he was 101 and she was 99, I think. And uh, they were still happy and they were still cuddled and they still hold hands. And their kids were like, yeah, they've been, always been like this their whole life. What, why? Why does that work? Well, and I have another one of a couple that met while they were in high school. And uh, I don't even think they were driving yet. And they dated, married, and been together. And they were a little old couple. And he was giggling and laughing. They were at a cafe. And they were joking and teasing. And they both said, oh, if we had to do it over again, we'd marry this, I'd marry the same person. I love it. I loved every bit of it. Why? Why does that work? Because they keep the polarity alive. They're conscious to keep that polarity, to constantly reignite the polarity every day. Most couples, after they get married or get become a couple, start letting the polarity die because they're not conscious of what polarity is. And when I find couples that usually are blissfully happy for all those years, they usually come from, an, they're usually older. They come from an older before, uh, before we started to evolve into the second stage so much. And so they have a, a little bit more polarization, natural polarization taught by society, okay? Um, which, which society doesn't teach anymore. Society kind of, unless you're in a, a, another culture. There's other cultures where marriage is much stronger and you'll see the stronger polarity when you go to them. 